Amen. Well, good morning, saints. Amen. It is great to be here. Pastor, thank you all for allowing us to come and share as uh, football's in the air. It's the first of August. And uh, boy, I can remember back in high school, mm, I still get, I can still smell the grass. You know, it's fresh cut and you're going to get out there and get a little practice in and boy, it gets hot in Alabama, doesn't it? Woo. But anyway, uh, football is, uh, God used football powerfully in my life as a, uh, it was just a tool, a vehicle that he used to help uh, guide me, help instruct me, help teach me. And uh, so I thank God for football. And uh, it helped uh, coming up through middle school, high school, uh, the vision that I, that the Lord really just downloaded in me is through athletics, through football, through sports, you can get a, you can get a scholarship, go on to college, get a degree, come back and help your mother. At the time, my mother was an, was an alcoholic and uh, I'm number eight of nine children, originally from Columbus, Georgia, but God used football powerfully. You know, some people don't, they don't care for sports, or, but uh, people are involved in sports and I tell folks that, hey, if people are involved, God's, in, God's involved. So that's my background and uh, my wife and I, I've got to recognize my wife, I'm a letter stand. I'm, I'm, hon, will you stand? This is my wife, Jean, <laughs> amen. And. Uh, I was at a wedding last night and we were, we, I had to, a friend of mine went to Alabama with me and I was talking to her coming back and it, as I just wanna, if I get a little excited this morning in my delivery uh, of what I'm gonna share, you just, it's because of where God has brought me from. And I can become emotional about that, I'm thankful. Number eight of nine children, and uh, my parents had about a fourth grade education. Siblings before me that, you know, they didn't go on and finish high school. So th that is what I was, that's my story. That's what I was born into. That was what was in my backpack. As you can see, the title of my message this morning uh, is called The Power of Love. My story is a story of love. And anybody that's accomplished anything in Christ, it's a story of a love relationship with a risen Savior. Amen? 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 You got to get excited about that, saints. And don't let your fire go out. Because God, guess what? Whether well, you realize it, you know, we got our different teams, but all of us are on God's team. Amen? And he wants to use you. Guess what? He wants you to be a starting player. Yes, amen. He, don't, he doesn't believe in people sitting in the bench. Right. <laughs> He's not looking for reserves. Right. <laughs> amen. amen. And some of us are sitting in the bench. So I realize God, this, this love story. So as we share this morning, it's a story of triumph, amen. victory. Because yes. that's bottom line on any given Saturday, yes. any given Sunday. Yes. Amen. It's, hey, you want your team to win. Man. You're a Georgia fan, we, you playing Alabama, that's what he was just, hey, man, look, we just want to pass. Man. Hey, to your coach, we, we just want to win. That's the bottom line. So what, that, that should be how we see our lives. Right. In what you do, what God's called you to do, what he's calling your children to do. Yes. Challenge your parents to Start talking with your children. About what is the vision that God has given you? So as I was a young man growing up through high school there in Phoenix City, I was serious about the, the call that was on my life. God didn't say, hey, you need to wait till you're an adult to get, get serious about this deal. So this love relationship needs to start the sooner the better. It's called the power of love. A love relationship with our risen Savior. And you don't need to be ashamed of that. When I got to the University of Alabama in 1979 as an 18-year-old, I wasn't ashamed of who Jesus was. I was looking for the people that was walking with him. Hello. Where are they at? Because I've got a love relationship. And when did that happen for me? At 13 years of age. 
little Baptist church down the street. Pleasant Grove Baptist Church, probably three, four doors from our house. I'm a middle schooler. And that summer of 1974, right before school was out, two, three weeks, I had gotten in a fight, got suspended. One of multiple fights. Anybody was a baby kid growing up, you know what that saying is? <laughs> you just bad, you know. I, it, the Lord had to save me at an early age. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? You just had that kind of character defects. You just was messed up. Hello, amen. Don't look at me like you've been hold all your little lies. Come on, saints, we get up in here. Hey, I was, I was on, woo, I needed saving, bad. Anyway, so um, if you knew my father, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, so um, I, I'm, I'd gotten suspended, and you know that last, Pastor McGinn, you know that last fight I got in in middle school? I was in the seventh grade. I can remember like yesterday. I still remember the gentleman's name that I got in a fight with him. Kid back then, his name was Rent Bellum. He was the center on the eighth grade team. I was, well, I don't know what I was, man. I, anyway, um, and I just plotted all year. That, he used to walk out of the schoolhouse, be the last one out, the first one in the bus line. I said, well, if I ever get to the front of that bus line, I bet he won't break in front of me. <laughs> I plotted all year. Prayed, oh, let me get in front of that bus line. Let me get in front. I bet you he won't break in front of me. And he was like this, and you know, I'm down here, and I'm, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Man, I tell you what. Anyway, so, <laughs> latter part of the school year, our science grade teacher, Miss Lee, lets us out early. Mm. Red Bellman, I'm going to be, I, I'm gonna be the first one in the line today. Sure was. Man, I kicked them doors open, going, but looked out there, ain't nobody in the bus line. Whew, ran out there in front. First, and just like usual, he walks out there, strolling in front of me and breaking us. I tell him, hey, what you doing? He said, turn around and look at me, it look like I'm breaking. I said, not today. <laughs> Matter of fact, I got my younger brother here with me. He can testify because I gave him my books. I told him to hold my books. That I said, here, hold my books for me. I got a little business I need to take care of. <laughs> and, uh, now, you know, if you didn't know anything about fighting, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't wait to throw the second punch, right? Because you, your lights might be out from the guy that threw the first one. So I ain't, I ain't, I, I'm, I'm on him, Pastor, like white on rock. Boy, I'm on him. It's over with. You know, one of them Mike Tyson just boom, boom, boom. And I got suspended again. Mm. Went home, took that note home to my mother. My mother had to sign it. My mom just had a real problem with alcohol. Boy, I'm talking about be go two, three, four, five days, just get intoxicated, beat the living days, lice out of you. Just, uh, okay, I can have a two inch scar right here where she cut me one day with a knife. You went to the hospital, stitched it up. It's a 10 year old kid. Um, and she said something that God used. He was drawing me. She said, mm, son, I'm so disappointed in you. And boy, God, just boom. Started drawing me through that. Disappointed my mom, and that, that bothered me. That summer, went to that little Baptist church, sitting on the front row. You know, back then, they let you, if you weren't saved, they asked you, were you saved? And you, I went in, on, must not be that, and I was just sitting on the front row. They put you on the front row, and they call it the mourner's bench. Anybody know what I'm talking about? They had the mourner's bench. And, uh, and they just, preachers just preached to them on sitting on the front row. And the gospel was presented. For the first time in my life, I was told that Jesus loves me. For God so loved the world. I went in that church a sinner, I came out a saint. Hallelujah. And that's how I really, I greeted you all this morning. Good morning, saints. So all of the accomplishments, everything that Jeremiah Castile accomplished in, in my lifetime so far came out of that. That started with that moment of me meeting, coming to know the Lord. And I received it. 
And oh, oh, how I needed him, how I needed to know that I was loved. Let me share something with you. <clears throat> You'll never truly walk in victory until you receive this love. You'll never have the empowerment until you receive this love. You'll never have the wisdom until you receive this love. You can see statue wise, I wasn't, I wasn't the biggest guy, the fastest guy. None of those things. I was 5'900". I went to Alabama at 5'9", 155 pounds. That's all I could bring to the fight. You know what I mean? And, uh, but I was... If you go and check the records, I was a starter at every level. As a statuized, as a small, undersized player because of this love. I don't believe you truly hit excellence. You can't hit excellence if you don't know Jesus. Let me tell you why I say that. He says because uh, without him, you can do nothing. Now, and that's, that's not saying people don't, are not gifted naturally. God hadn't, he's gifted all of us. But in order for you to be truly great Amen. and excel at the highest, that I believe that there has to be a love relationship. Amen. So when you look at the scripture in Deuteronomy 6, 5, listen to what it says. It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, with all your strength. And I believe we're living in a times where the people that truly understand and will obey and walk in this covenant love relationship are the people that God is going to use mightily in these last days. Saints, listen to me. I, you know, see, for me, I can relate to this, this scripture because, you know what? It took everything. When you, when you undersize, you, I couldn't compromise. You know, when you're playing against a guy, he's six three six four. Didn't have room for compromise. Guess what it took? It took all of my strength, all of my, took everything. So where are you at in this love relationship? You taking it for granted? God's serious about this love relationship. Jesus died to have this love relationship with you and I. This love's important. As a matter of fact, look at what he says to the. <clears throat> I'm reading in Ephesians, uh, uh, in Revelation, it says, To the angel of the church of Ephesus, write these, these words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks <clears throat> among the seven golden lampstands. I know your, your deeds, your hard work, your perseverance. I know you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you've tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. You've persevered, have endured hardships for my name, have not grown weary, yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had first. Have you allowed the fire to just die down a little bit? Is he still first? The Lord is saying right here, guess what? You can, Jeremiah, you can go do all these things Work-wise, but the number one thing is this love relationship with me. That's how important it is. It's an intimate fellowship with the God of heaven and earth, and from that will flow the works. If you're truly on fire, you're truly in love with the Lord, guess what? Works naturally come. Can I share with you a natural work? I had a, when I came to the Lord, you know what? I was able to forgive my mother. Started living right. How about that one? <laughs> Amen? This, you know, the love relationship. The, we can get caught up in the do's and don'ts. You know how you start walking in the do's? It's called a relationship. You don't want to offend the person. Why well, I've been faithful to my wife? Because I love her. What I found is if I focus on this love relationship, the works comes 
and the sanctification. That is the cleaning up of me. So many times we pray and folks get just it's the love relationship. Without listen to it, without me, you can do nothing, Jeremiah. All the powers in him. Amen. Amen. Yes. And that's what see at my size, at my height. That's what I realized. I realized quickly, man, I'm not as big as that guy. I, I, I met coach here this morning. He, he coached Bo Jackson. I played against Bo. You remember them commercials, Bo Knows? Let me tell you what I knew Bo knew. How to run over you. <laughs> hey, man, I'm talking about up close and personal, live. I'd be, you talking about somebody gifted physically? Whoo! You're around for the next 50 to 100 years. You're not going you're not going to meet many athletes that can do what Bo, what God gifted Bo Jackson to do. 6'2", 230, 35 pounds, and he was uh, he had world-class speed. He could run around you, over you, what what whatever he chose to do. And we, I played against him in, in college at Alabama and in, in the pros. And he was more terrible in the pros. <laughs> Grown men that's getting paid, he was making them look like little bit of boys. Yes. Mm, yes. So I didn't physically have all of the measurables. Can I share something with you? That's all right in the kingdom of God. He said that, you guess what? Jeremiah, you're right where I want you to be. So many times we are looking at the man, when you need to understand it's a love relationship that and through it, he'll empower you. And you learn to trust him, depend on him in this love relationship. And you know what? God will just do a powerful work and put you in all the places that he desires you to be. We buried my mother, Mary Castile, this past May, May, two years, May of 2019. I was talking to the pastor out of Columbus, Georgia, on the phone as we were getting ready for the service. So I need to tell you something about your mother. Say, so your mother led more people to this church in the last 30 years than any other person. A lady that came to the Lord at 52 years of age for the next 34 years of her life, she never, never took another drink of alcohol. God. Went on to be with the Lord at 86. <laughs> love, the love of God, the power of this love is so available to us, yet on a daily basis, we neglect to develop this love relationship. You know, if you go check the records at the University of Alabama, I'm, well, I held a rep tied for it at one point, but I had some guys come along and break it. But how did I do it? At, and I'm undersized. Well, I can remember just, I'd be out at practice, getting down in my stance or whatever, saying, quoting scripture. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Yeah, this gets six, five, 300 pounds. Yeah, you need, you, yeah, you better be quoting some scripture. Yeah, hey, Amen. Amen. I learned to quote scripture. Hello. Now, we, we, uh, now you think that, oh, well, that, uh, I, should I really do that on my job? Where else you think God want to take his word? Should I do that with my children? We didn't read all of it, but if you went back to Deuteronomy, that's what he says. Right. Teach them. Right. Amen. Amen. See, this love is powerful. And how we living in a world. I won't go to the scripture, but it kind of over in Matthew 24, around verse 12, it says, in the last days, lawlessness will abound. And the love of many will grow cold. Is that what God desires? No. But he's just laying the facts out for you. 
Guess what, saints? Don't let that be you. You know what I've decided? That's not going to be me. Amen. It doesn't have to be you. Now, it's in there, but you don't have, it doesn't have to be you. You can make a decision about it. Because guess what all of us do? We choose. God's given you the right, the freedom to choose who you're going to love. He's given you that right, that freedom. I just thank God that at 13, I decided based on the, the gospel being presented that he loved me. I'm going to love you back, Lord, Amen. and I'm going to walk with you. And he's given me victory. Real quickly as we close, let me give you five things. What makes love powerful? We, for sake of time. Love gives. The greatest gift. God so loved the world. Love gives. We had a young man just talking about it a moment ago. You know what? You know, why you, know, you may not feel powerful? Why you're excited? And I'm talking about the Lord. Why, 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 I, I can remember I, I've been around people. And, well, it don't take all that, Jeremiah. Why are you so fired up? Why are you so excited? Well, if I can do this on the football field, why wouldn't I do it? Why shouldn't I feel this way in my love relationship with my Lord and Savior? Amen. So when you come to understand, see this room, when he was sharing a moment ago, what he was talking about was becoming great. Not the world's greatness, God's. It says if you'll give, You'll become a servant. I'll make you great in the kingdom. That's right. Saints, you get busy doing this, you won't have enough room in this place a year from now. Right. now. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You want to be powerful, start giving. That's what I did growing up. I started serving, working, serving, and God will raise you up. What else makes love powerful? Love forgives. Mmm. Have you been forgiven? How many, how, many, how many offices from others are you still holding on to? The, f the first person I learned to forgive was my mother, who I felt like had rejected me through the things that she'd done. Let me show you. It's supernatural. Yes. Amen. <laughs> it's a supernatural love. And when offense comes, guess what is in the, guess what is the nature of that love? Forgives. Why? Because guess what? In your heart and mind, God says we have to be careful of what we allow in our hearts. God didn't give you the heart he gave you for it to be contaminated with offense. So let me share some with you. You may need to get some of this. You need to say, Lord, I forgive so and so before you leave here today. Some of us that are married, we're still holding on. Offenses. You want to be great. You want to be powerful. Learn to forgive. Boy, I wish they had the time to tell a story of we had a brother that was murdered in 1996, New Year's Day, walking to visit my mother in Phoenix City. Gets, she's on the phone. My wife and I walk in the door. She's hanging the phone up, getting the news. We had a brother that was murdered. My mother had been saved and sober about 11 years at that time. She hangs the phone up. She said, baby, that was a chaplain at a prison in, Bur in Alabama somewhere, and your brother's been murdered. And these were her next words. She said, the real person, in, the real victim was not your brother. It was the person that did the killing. And I got a chance to confront that man two years later in prison, went to him, and we were able to let him know that I've forgiven him. You gotta practice this love, saints. You wonder why, you, why I don't feel power? Because you're not practicing. All teams practice. You gotta practice. You know what my mother ended up? My mother ended up corresponding with that man until he, he passed away. That's true greatness. You don't have to be on television to be great. You got to be in the entertainment to be great. 
you be right here in the kingdom, right. impacting those in the, that God's called you to impact. Amen? 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 Forgive! It's like God has forgiven you. Amen? Matter of fact, every time you see a cross, you know, regardless of what, you know, if somebody got one big old chain on it, gold or whatever, you know, sometimes we can get a little sideways from, oh, why are you wearing that cross? Like, what? You know, because we'll use it for jewelry. But to me, what the cross symbolizes is forgiveness. Correct. It should be an international symbol of forgiveness. Right. Number three, what makes love powerful? Is, you know what love does? It sacrifices. Woo! What's happening to that word in our culture? Not me. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not Jesus. I ain't no saint. Well, what are you? True saints sacrifice. Why is his name above all names? Because of the ultimate sacrifice. Why is his name above all names? Ultimately because of the sacrifice. How can you truly say you love and you haven't sacrificed? What's synonymous with love is sacrifice. And yet we live in a culture. Well, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm, I don't, I don't, I, I can't give. I, I don't have enough to give. The greatest giving is when it's sacrificial. Right. Amen. Amen. Whoo. Number four, love heals. Not just physically. You know where the first healings took place was my spiritual man. When I met and came to and received Jesus, God started healing my spiritual man. How many of you come in here and your spirit man is just way down and you need healing? You need this love. You know what God started healing my spirit man? All, everything else just lined up. The physical man, the mental, all of it just it started flowing. And so all of the accomplishment, every just he had. He had to start on this. You know, so we want to start on the outside so many times. Well, let me get this right. Let me do this. Right. The healing starts in the inner man. He wants to heal you. So when he did that, Pastor, you know, when I realized I'm somebody in Christ, I didn't have to go around the neighborhood to my doping it up, smoking it up. No, don't know. Mm -mm -mm. I know who I am. Maybe you're still trying to please people and the influences of the world are pulling on you because this healing and knowing who you are, your identity in this love relationship. Woo! So, you know, so when I lined up and there was a Bo Jackson or whoever, I believed in who God said I was. Jeremiah, guess what? You're somebody. Not arrogantly, carnally, no, but you're somebody. You're my son. You're my daughter. And he's saying, this Holy Spirit is saying that this morning to somebody in here. You're my son. You're my daughter. And that's when your healing is going to take place when you receive that. And I wish we had more time to preach on this. <laughs> Woo. Finally, what does love? Love wins. Love wins. God is one. It's finished. Jesus says it's finished. Listen to me. Whatever your circumstance, whatever your problem, guess what? You've won. You've overcome. Played, I got down to Tampa Bay. You know, I go from a national championship team to a losing team in the NFL. Worst team in the league. One in, four, one in 15 my rookie year. Two and 14 my second year. Three and 13, oh, we was getting better, weren't we? <laughs> Amen. And, uh, you know, we lose these ball games, and I walk out of the locker room. Whoop, whoop. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> we just lost. Aren't you terribly sad? No. Hallelujah. 
Praise God. I've won ultimately. I'm not, hey, that score versus the kingdom score of where I'm going to spend it to, can't compare. Did y'all hear what I just said? You're so caught up in the temporal. You're missing the eternal. You've won. That's what Jeremiah Castile held on to. Ultimately, regardless of the score, whatever team you, you, your team is this year, they are losing team. Ultimately, you know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Hear me. Don't be all down in the dumps about it. You and I have won. Amen. 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 At the end of the day. And so that's why I can stand before you today with the accomplishments because this love story, this love relationship with Jesus. And I thank you all. God bless you, Pastor McGinnis. Come on up. Blessings to you all. God bless you. Thank you for letting me be with you. Amen.